It's one of my favorite events to cover all year long, the Native Youth Olympic Senior Games. So much action and culture all packed into just a few days of competition, and the opening ceremonies are second to none. The drumming and songs are just so contagious. It really gets the people going. And it was time for the opening ceremonies where we got to see some really creative and cool banners made by the teams. The next three days are going to be full of camaraderie, but they are also full of competition. So let's jump right into that first event. And by jump, I mean that literally. The kneel jump is getting the day started. Athletes start on their knees, then they use their arms to build up some momentum before launching. And check out Colton Paul of Mount Edgecombe showing that those abs, they're not just for show. Jumping 66 and 3 fourths inches for the win. And for the girls, it was Nikki Eric from the Lower Kuskokwim School District. First time experiencing NYO State. First time here, seeing lots of people from different places. It gives me motivation for schoolwork. Those two of the big keys for NYO youth athletes, forming connections with other young athletes from around the state, and the games become a motivation to stay in school and do well so that you can participate. Now let's check out the rest of the top five for the girls. Eric on the top of the podium. But it was a very close top five with fractions of an inch being the difference. For the guys, Colton Paul hopped, skipped, and Neil jumped ahead of everyone. But David Malzal, Nick Amora, Damian Nukasuk, and LeBron Walter gave him a good run. Now to what they call the NASCAR of NYO, the wrist carry. Athletes using their wrists to hold them up as their carriers run them around the court. Maya Campbell right here from the Matsu B team going around one and a half times or 250 feet and one one-fourth inch. Then it was Ethan Jenkins of Dillingham defending his title from last year going a whopping 560 feet, eight three-fourths inches. He went around so many times we won't even be able to see the end of it. And even though it's called the wrist carry, the wrist isn't the most important part. I feel like it's your carriers. Um, I mean, it's like a whole teamwork kind of thing, you know? And if you don't communicate with your carriers and your commu carriers don't communicate with you, it's really hard to, like, you know, keep going as far as you want to. And let's check the rest of the top five. Campbell on the top shelf. Patio and Pena were really not that far behind. And Johnson and Amora both had strong runs. That's the thing. You only get one chance at it. So the pressure really does get to you, but it didn't get to Jenkins setting a new personal best. Samora Olsen and another Campbell making an appearance on the leaderboard with Crow flying into the top five. And now to the last event of the evening and one of my personal favorites. I mean, check out that athleticism. That's what it takes to do the Alaskan high kick. Kaylin Carter of the Matsu A team coming that close to 71 inches, but she got 70 and she'll settle for first place. For the boys, it was Colton Paul who was doing it all throughout the day. That was for 92 and the win. But then check this out. Just a minute or two later to tie the state record at 93, and he got it. But you have to take off and land on the same side of his body, which he didn't, so he didn't actually get it. But still wildly impressive. Here's the top five. It was a bad day to be a kicking ball because those ladies were killing it. Some huge numbers for the guys. Colton Paul balled, and I have a feeling we'll see him on the top of the leaderboard again. But that was an exciting, that was as of an exciting boys Alaskan high kick finals as I can remember. All the competitors using their toes to tally up some big numbers. And we have a ton of NYO to go, another action-packed day tomorrow. But Beth and Melissa, which one of those events do you think you'd be the best at?